Alright, so in this video I'm going to show you how to declare an array right, in Java and initialize or try to assign a value right, to each array. slot we say that okay so if you look at an array an array is just like a table format right I can use Excel to represent that I may name array a right and this is my index size but array happen to start from 0 not 1 just like that right like let me name an array is great Oh, uh, great, right? So it should start from 0, 1. Now, in my program, I'm going to make it small first. I'm going to make it maybe an array size of 5. So this should be 5 because 0 to 4, right? So I'm going to declare something like this. So that is a one dimension array with one column. Okay? And we access the values by go to great index 0 I should get a letter A something like that great is A right great is B right C D F something like that right now of course naming convention in Java we use lowercase again right so we want to create something like this in Java how do we do that so I'm going to show you now by create a new project in Eclipse so I'm going to name Ray demo. Alright, so <clears throat> inside here I'm going to create a new class. Okay, say alright, one dimension array. Include a main here. Alright, so I'm going to now if I declare my variables here. This is going to be a public to the class. That means valid inside the class, right? If I declare inside the method, it's only valid inside the method. This is just review, right? Now the question is, do you want this to be valid inside the class or inside the method? If you try to create another method to use this same, then you better put it inside the class, right? Then it's going to share right so I'm going to put it here so now another question is should modifier be private or public if you want another class to access to this grade then you say public if you don't want you say private in the next unit you will learn the concept of classes we have the concept called encapsulation which always makes sense to define your class attributes to be private and we're going to talk about why when you get to that unit. So private. Now this is an array of grades. So char, a characters char, and name grade equals to new char. And I said the size is five, but we said we better name a constants instead of five here. The reason is if you want to change it in the application it's going to be easier to change in one place right so at this point I'm going to name private okay private m I'm going to name int and the naming conventions for the constants first constants you have to do final final means a constant a keyword in Java to create a constant and <clears throat> this is going to be a naming convention student hate count so all in caps between the words we use underscore okay and now you can start to define giving five to it <clears throat> and then we're going to replacing five with the constants here 
Okay? <clears throat> so, that's one reason. And another reason is if you really imagine that you are reading the file that have thousand lines of code, several classes, and use maybe hundred or ten of arrays, and they all have five, ten, twenty, thirty. It's going to be very difficult to configure or figure out what are those number for. But if you have the name here, uh, ah, that means you try to do the size of student, right? Even you have 10, 20 different arrays, if you have the name, it's make it easier for your program to read, pretty much, right? That's another concern. Now, that's how you declare an array. So, we learn how to declare an array in Java. So the next step is to initialize. And we said to initialize this, there are two ways, right? One <coughs> is you can use a loop, okay? Now, in Java, we have for, while, do while, three type of loops. So I'm going to use for for now. So I'm going to use for, syntax is int i equals to zero. 0i zero here is represent an index, an index that we see here, right? So this is pretty much your i here, right? When i is equal to 0, we're going to refer to grade 0, right? And you're going to get into i loop until the end, right? And pretty much when i less than the student head count, you can say that too, right? That's one way. If you want to say that, which is fine too, because that's going to be less than five, which is four, right? Or you can just say create dot You should have an access to an array size by grade dot. <coughs> they didn't see it. It should be length, right? Uh, did you import and then increment one by one. Let's see if we can get it in. Oh, we're still dealing with statics, so great it has to be a statics. <laughs> Otherwise, not seeing it. That's why. Then this has to be statics too. We have to access value in the statics way. So we have an access to that. So that's another way you get to the size of. Right, H array slot. That's what I try to say here. H array slot. Because this is an array and it's a slot. Or we can call rows. So array is just like a table. That makes sense? Now, let's see, since we use loop, like I said, we can initialize the values to the loop. <coughs> so, let's say I'm going to prompt the user to enter. Let's use J option pane again. Dot show message dialog and say enter. Ah, great, right? So J option pane is going to return a string, right? A string. Now. Not sure if we have the parsers for that. But of course, it's going to be easy anyway if you just get an index. Like whatever you get here, you can do show input dialog. I'm sorry. I need to do prompt the user with the input for the grade, right? And then at the end, this whole statement returns in string, correct? So that means I should have an access to the method of string at the end, right? Which is char at. 
and char add is going to return a char type back, which at index zero, right? You always get the letters, which is going to take into grade at index i. Right, so that's how I convert string to characters by using char add, pretty much returned back, right? Now, then you're pretty much done, right? You initialize from the user input, right? So that's how we, like I said, you use loop, right? And prompt for user input, right? To initialize array, right? Make sense? So now, of course, after you initialize, you want to be able to display the output to make sure that it's correct. So the next step, I'm going to show you how to display, or pretty much, and when you display, that means you try act to access a value, right, of each array slot, correct? So how do we do that? <clears throat> like, I can just say, okay, j option pane dot show message dialog, right, and. For simple sake, I can just throw in, I want to see what is great on slot number zero, right? Uh, and I can just keep repeating the same, right? When I do repeating over and over again, that means what? This is just a normal, simple, right, way to display, which you can just limit holding here and put in loop, correct? Right. Whenever time, whenever you to do the same thing over and over again, I'm going to come in to show you. You can do, and you can just take this loop, right? The size of array. Make sense? And then just do the option pane and change the number to what? Yes, to I. That's the same thing. So that's one way. Let's test that. <clears throat> Integrate, right? So that should be for the first index. Then we want to specify integrate, right? And we're going to say i, right? Something like that, right? Integrate 0, grade 1. Integrate 0. Integrate 1, right? B. Integrate 2. Z. D. F. Now it's display now, right? Because after you finish entering grade, I make it to display A, B, C, D, F. So it works. The good thing about array, when you use an array, you can use for each. This is for loop. It's not for each, okay? Let me show you how to use for each. And also in Eclipse, when you hit Control, Control Shift C, you you highlight the line that you want to do single line comments. It's going to add the single line comment for you. But when you do multiple line comments, you do control, okay, control shift, like if I want to highlight this, control shift, question mark, and control shift, backslash to remove it, okay, to add, and control shift, backslash to remove. Alright, so I want to show you for each. For each is for, and you declare the type, name, list, each, and array.